railroad truck. So you might have National Guard guys in railroad cars, or you might have them, um, you know, checking personal vehicles that were coming across. I or, hope, I hope or, so. Or freight, or, or freight trucks that were coming across. Yes. Is that reasonable? As, as long as that's what in fact is happening, because you know we've been speaking for a couple of days now about how words, terms have been redefined while you and I weren't paying attention, and you know uh, uh, homelessness became unhoused and illegal a alien becomes undocumented immigrants. So so fentanyl interdiction to me could mean a, a whole variety of things that are not actually poking your head into the back of a truck with a drug dog sniffer by your side when you have to go into his, uh, I found drug sniffer. I'm just, I'm just so skeptical, man. Okay, I appreciate the cynicism, and to a large degree, I'm with you on it. Um, but am I reading you correctly when I'm saying that it may be more political optics, and it may be more of a political stunt than actually an interdiction? It may very well be in, in my cynical mind, having earned my cynicism and told her otherwise. The other one that, that paid close attention to, yes, she's sending the Arizona National Guard. How many? 62 of them? I mean, they've got hundreds of miles of the border of the United States in southern Arizona. And how many again? So if all of a sudden the, the number that she's sending to the border is in the thousands, we got something to talk about. Good for you, Governor Hobbs. If she's sending 47 guys and they're only going for um, one weekend a month, then we have we have something else to talk about. So so I'm skeptical these ways that the governor can employ the National Guard. It's like, well, they're only going for the one weekend a month that they would normally get a unit. And, oh, by the way, it's going to be the only this particular unit, which happens to be, you know, 14 guys. Okay, so she, she, she's trying to be a little more specific. She said that uh, these, these troops, and she calls them troops, they're going to assist the Department of Public Safety and local law, law enforcement with enforcement activities, including uh, fentanyl interdiction, Political support and human trafficking enforcement efforts, and, and I appreciate your your boots on the ground experience. I'm not I'm not questioning you at all. I'm just being a little maybe a um, little naive. And if an elected official is actually going to do what they say they're going to do, and that what they say they're going to do actually has some teeth to it, right? And and is it just some sort of a press it out and make it all go away? And it don't prove otherwise. Back in, in uniform between Iraq and Afghanistan deployments, 
we almost picked up a gig from Camp Pendleton down on the Arizona border, and we had a chance to, to decline on it because a bunch of us were going to Afghanistan. But when you start reading the actual um, legislation that allowed us to, to go there, we were going to be miles back from the government, from the border. And my favorite part of this was we were not allowed to carry weapons because you never need weapons with the cartels coming across the story and the customs and border patrols ever been shot at. So there's this there's this bizarre uh, aspect of uh, the legal history of America. Says that the U.S. military cannot be used for law enforcement purposes on U.S. soil. Lawyers out there will say no. So, so there's always we have the military, i.e., National Guard, working in a any law enforcement.
on the other side of the greenhouse, and it's getting tense. And it's working all the way around, got right in his ear, and I go, Master Sergeant, it's a cheese danish. Eat it. It's a cheese danish, but it's the national Slovenian dish. And he ate, but what is he wouldn't have I not, as a Marine Corps major to a Marine Corps Master Sergeant, said, eat it. Um, and he was like that. We had people uh, starving little children. We gave them our bread. They wouldn't eat it either because it was culturally different. Well, it makes sense that these uh, peoples from various cultures and nations are rejecting food that's being delivered, uh, not, not directly from the city of New York, but actually through a vendor called Dotco. Is that another nonprofit? Um, doesn't say, but I, it sounds like it is. So as Philip would call him, our partner here, uh, Poverty. Yep. Okay, there you have it. Philip, well, so uh, Tressy on vacation. That's uh, Terry Sladek. I'm Lee Curtis Johnson. The Afternoon Drive here on KMJ, kmjnow.com, or wherever you stream. Right now, E in Los Angeles, southbound I-5 at the State Route 33 off-ramp. Is there a rig that is causing a hazard at this point in Fresno? Eastbound 180, it marks at the off-ramp. Uh, someone has um, dropped some kind of a, a ladder or something in, of a metal nature in the roadway, causing some problems. Then we have on West Mount Whitney, just west of Highway 41, a collision, unknown injuries at this point. Next update, 403, Great Lake, KMJ. Thank you for Low, but demand remaining high? You need Indeed. Their all-in-one platform helps you attract, interview, and hire candidates all from one place. And Indeed's interview tool lets you schedule and conduct virtual interviews right from their website. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. Mike Sterinian, owner of The Elbow Room. What's really exciting is we have now started dry aging. The humidity and temperature is precisely controlled. The, the convergence of tenderness and flavor at 28 days, that's really a sweet Enjoyable. Can you still get switch They've got 11 different brands of new 
world's largest inventory of vehicles in the valley. They just go to look. They are just cars. Even my kids love Summer Auto Mall. There's tacos and churros on Sundays. Freddy trains, the bounce house. What do you think about me? Okay, I bought a new car, and they just threw in an amazing 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty. What did I do to deserve that? Just success that Selma Auto Mall values you. <laughs> so, do you think we'll even let me jump in the bounce house? You're 42. That's just really good. Aww. Selma Auto Mall on 99 and 43 in Selma. Why buy anywhere else? A copy of the warranty is available to read prior to sale at the dealership. Commercial use being used for hire to public or to transport people for hire, or vehicles registered in the business name are excluded. Select new details are excluded. Gift giving just got better at Harris Ranch Resort. We're spreading a little holiday cheer with a special promotion just for you. For every $100 Harris Ranch gift card you purchase, we're giving you a $20 bonus card. Absolutely free. To take advantage of this limited time offer, visit us at harrisranch.com or better yet, stop on by in person where our friendly team members will happily assist you. But hurry, this offer won't last long. Share the gift of an unbeatable experience at Harris Ranch Resort this holiday. For more information, visit harrisranch.com. Harris Ranch, where the West Coast why? Where candidates are heard, and where voters have a voice. This is Fresno's election headquarters. News Talk 580 KMK, and always streaming on your smart device and at KMKNow.com. Thank you for joining us here on the Afternoon Drive on KMJ at KMJNow.com or wherever you stream. Well, Dressy is taking some much deserved vacation time. Terry Slatic filling in here, Curtis and Curtis Johnson. Uh, if you just joined us, we were just talking about a story where uh, we we'll see a number of illegal, illegal aliens that New York is taking in. Uh, they're wasting about a million dollars a month. Uh, the city, in order to feed these people, have used a vendor called Doc Go. And the uh, well, the illegal aliens were there literally throwing away most of the food. They just want to eat. Uh, speaking of food and uh, political correctness, I tell you that interesting story here that to some degree makes me sad and in another way it makes me chuckle a little bit. Oh, it, it, as it, well, it, it makes me more sad than chuckle that I get it. So many of you are aware that I was uh, in the Marine Corps for, uh, for various periods of my life up to, until August of 2013. And this is a story about the Army. It's an Associated Press piece titled The Pandemic Towns Pushed 10,000 U.S. Army Soldiers into Obesity. And it starts with, after gaining 30 pounds during the COVID pandemic, U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Daniel Murillo is finally getting back into fighting shape. Now, early pandemic lockdowns, Emma Howard's on his laptop, and heightened stress led Murillo to reach for cookies and chips in his barracks at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Gyms are closed, organized exercise was cut, and Murillo's motivation to work out on his own was slow. He states he could notice it. Murillo is 5'5 five five and weighs 192. So that's kind of a fire part, uh, I, I would say. And his comment was, his uniform was tighter. Well, I think it's probably true. So he wasn't the only uniform service member giving us extra weight. Research found that the D.C. and U.S. military served during the pandemic. The Army alone, 10,000 active duty soldiers, developed with D.C. between February of 19 and June of 21, pushing the rate to nearly a quarter of the troops' study. So we have 450,000 soldiers in the United States Army. So it doesn't say what specifically number was, was targeted. Actually, it does. It implies that it was 40,000. So, so 10,000 out of 40,000 were surveyed and studied and the 450,000 people in U.S. Army uniforms. Um, and they found that overweight and obese people were more likely to be injured and less likely to endure, uh, endure the physical demands of the profession. Now, I went back in the Marines at age 46 and found myself in, in Iraq at 47, uh, Afghanistan at 49, back in Iraq at, at, um, at 51, back in Afghanistan at 56, as an infantry officer. And I can actually you without fear or contradiction that if you're not fit and you're running around in the hot sun wearing 85 pounds of, of gear, um, 15, 16, 17 hours a day, and, and I like to, to when I estimate how many miles I walked through Afghanistan in 2010, I walked 3,000 miles. 
That's a lot of miles. It's a lot of miles. And if you're doing that, you're 20 pounds overweight, 30 pounds overweight, 